I really like the problem that we're going to work on in this video. It's the factorial digit sum problem. And the reason why I like it is because I think it's a perfect one to practice a lot of the things that we've learned in the course. So uh, after we read this, definitely try to pause the video and try to build it yourself before we go through the solution. Because I think that you'll see that pretty much everything that... Uh, we've gone through in the course, uh, there's nothing new in it. So you have all the knowledge you need in order to build this. Don't worry if you can't do it because uh, it's still very challenging, but uh, I definitely recommend it because it'll help you uh, learn it even better. Even if you fail doing it, you'll remember the solution better. So what is a factorial? Uh, factorial is, uh, they should give you the algebraic answer up here. Here's the example. Uh, factorial of 10 is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 all the way down. Factorial of 10 is massive just by itself. It's 3,628,800. So you, you, as you can see, factorials grow very, very quickly. And the sum of the digits in uh, 10 factorial is 27. And so the way that you can count that is it's just literally the sum of the digits, 3, 6, 2, 8, 8, 0, and 0. So that equals 27. So what we need to do is find the sum of the digits in the number 100 factorial. So as you can see, we have to find the factorial, then we have to uh, split it up, get all the digits, add them together, and that's how we'll get the sum. So let's uh, start this off by creating a factorial method. So let's see, factorial value sum generator. It's a nice long name. And we're going to pass in a factorial as the argument. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is to set up an array. And so in this array, uh, we want it to range from 1 to the value of the argument passed into the function. So in this case, I'm going to do 1 dot dot factorial and then want to uh, cast this and convert it into an array. And now we, because if we're matching what we saw over here, this needs to be in reverse. So how do we reverse this? We just call the reverse method on it. And so when we call the reverse method on it, if this is 10 factorial, then what it's going to do is pass in 10 and then multiply it 10 times eventually when we add this part in. But it's going to do it backwards. So if we pass in 10 as factorial, it's immediately going to create an array that looks like this. But that won't work when we do our factorial method on it. So we need to split this up so our array looks like this. Does that make sense? That's, uh, that's a little bit of a, just a tricky way of being able to get it. You swap out or you reverse the order so that you can uh, be able to uh, call the factorial on it. So now that we have that, where it's an array, so we can call each on it and iterate over. I'm going to create an iterator variable called i and pass into the block. And now I'm going to call... Uh, I'm going to bring the factorial method uh, or argument in because here, remember, we want to grab uh, this sum. So I'm going to increment it by this value. And so this value is going to be factorial times i minus 1. Okay. Now, don't worry if you didn't get that. Uh, let's just... Hold on one second and go through it again. So uh, let's pick up where we left off right here. So I got 1 through 10. We reversed it, so it's going to be, assuming factorial, the argument is 10. Uh, we reversed it, so it's going to be 10 through 1. And now we're iterating over that new array. So let's just, for visual sake, say that we have array dot 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 all the way to one okay so we're iterating over it and so what we're doing is we're taking the value of factorial right here 
And so we're going to say this is what starts off with. So in this case, it'd be 10. And then we're going to add the product of factorial, which is also 10, times i minus 1. So in this case, i is going to be 10 minus 1, which is going to be 9. So this is going to be 10, or that's going to be the sum of 10 plus 10 times 9, 90. And so it's going to iterate through that all the way through. So hopefully that makes sense. I think it's a, a good way of writing the factorial method. So now that we have that, that's just a factorial. Now we actually have to uh, create the, uh, the sum of the digits. So I'm going to say factorial to string and then split this. And so what this is going to do is simply split it up so that each one of the digits is separated. And now I'm going to call the map method. So on the map method, we're going to pass it in a uh, block and call the to integer method on it. And then we're simply going to call inject so that we can add all of this up. And that is it. So let's now call our method, pass in a hundred because that's what we need for this one and let's see if this works ruby project euler this is problem 20 and 648 is the solution so great job this is a uh, uh, this is one that i thought was perfect for this course because it makes you use a lot of the things we've learned like being able to work with blocks being able to uh, call methods on arrays chain methods together uh, use methods like inject and map in conjunction with each other to be able to build a pretty uh, pretty elegant and simplified solution to a complex problem. So nice work.